welcome dear brothers and sisters to the studio of the Sabbath School Department by the General Conference. With the help of the Lord, we have a new Sabbath School lesson for you. And it is again a continuation of this series of Sabbath School lessons related to the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. The last Sabbath School lesson, we discussed the court or the judgment upon our Lord Jesus. And uh, now we're continuing in the same place. But now with the denying his Lord, we are going to discuss about the story about his disciples, their behavior, their temptations. It's a very important Sabbath school lesson because we can learn a lot from them and try to apply it, uh, these lessons in our personal life. We're together with our dear sister Raquel. Welcome Raquel. And uh, <clears throat> before we begin with our study, we wish to have a silent prayer. Join us, please. Amen. <clears throat> Let's have an overview on the, the structure of our lesson. Deny His Lord is the title of our lesson. We have a nice introduction, testimony, and then the first uh, under title is Following at a Distance. As I already mentioned, we're going to study about the temptation of uh, uh, His disciple, uh, Jesus' disciples, uh, Peter. And uh, this is the introduction to the story. Then we go to attempts to hide, and this uh, we can we know the contest, uh, the context of that story. If we're getting the master counsel, very important uh, portion of the lesson, we can uh, take um, a very important conclusion out of each and every Bible verse here, and if especially if we apply it to our personal life and possible temptations tomorrow when Sunday laws raise up or difficulties, persecution takes place, who is really going to remain faithful? This is a, a very important Sabbath school lesson. The next under title, Lack of Courage. And then come the next under title, The Faithful Moment. When the crook crowd and then says, says the door of mercy is still open. Actually, that's the last a question of the lesson that says not only a summary about the entire lesson but also a very important conclusion that even if we are unfaithful in certain moment and we fail because we have been tempted or we have been weak uh, the Lord does not deny us he continue praying for us and he can save us still uh, if we convert and com uh, confess our sins and this is very important part of the lesson. We need to have enough time for that and appeal to our brothers to uh, <clears throat> actually dedicate their hearts to the Lord. Let's go now to the first question. So we're going to see uh, in general what um, the lesson is about and we can enjoy also the comments of our dear sister Raquel. Okay. Raquel, the first question says, uh, while the authorities held Jesus in the court, what were two of his disciples doing? Uh, what can we say about these questions? And in general, who are these two disciples? Why are they there in the court palace? And uh, we have an illustration in the background. This picture is from India and it's not really from Israel, but it's uh, approximately an illustration of what's happened when people feel cold and they're around the fire. Uh, what is the situation in which uh, these two disciples enter? So, from the twelve disciples, nine abandon him, one betray him. Um, we will study about two, Peter and John, that follow him, but one of them, Peter in this case, how the lesson presented in the Bible also, will deny Jesus. So what we are going to consider during this lesson is two people that follow Jesus but react in a different way and also because of their own behavior and attitude, um, the environment and the people around them act differently. So what is important to emphasize here is that even if Peter and John, both to them, were very near to the courthouse and they were able to see and to hear all the procedure um, against Jesus, um, 
one of them, in this case Peter, our main character during the lesson, uh, react in a completely different way, even if internally he was connected with Jesus. So what we first um, need to emphasize here is that um, John was the one uh, originally allowed to come to the court because he asked for that. Um, and the priest allowed that with the expectation that John and Peter will be ashamed of his master and they will also separate it from him. So um, John intercede for Peter so that the priest allow also that he come in. So now we have John and Peter very near to the courthouse and um, about Peter we find that he stood at the door um, there and uh, in this specific time we will see that a series of events happen that also put on test the attitude and the behavior of Peter under um, special uh, circumstances. Thank you very much. Uh, we have um, many precedents and political a situation where when the people are arrested unjustly they uh, forms uh, a demonstrations of protesters that goes in the street shout and they look for the media and they try to do something so that righteousness takes place however this in this case when the most righteous man on earth was arrested there was nobody protesting for that and we see here uh, only two disciple, disciples of him uh, sneaking into the crowd. One because he was known to the priest, uh, maybe a relative even to the priest. And uh, the other one uh, full of a uh, mixed feeling and, and, and curiosity. He wanted to see what will happen uh, with his master. Perhaps hoping that in the last moment he will reveal his supernatural power. And, will overcome every uh, adversary <clears throat> but uh, we will see how things develop into the second question seeing the disciple Peter in the crowd what did the young man who was in the service of the high priest says to him did Peter, uh, Peter acknowledge that he was Jesus disciple now this is very interesting questions uh, about John, we don't know exactly what happened and where he was, but Peter was alone and he mingled with the crowd and what happened when he did so. We find here a very important element that um, facilitate to fall in uh, difficulties or problems. So uh, John was um, near to the court as a witness from everything what was going on, but he never tried to um, to be similar or to be together with the crowd. So he never tried to assume an attitude that will uh, consider him as all the other people. Now, the difference with Peter was that he tried to um, be accepted by the crowd and and to be witness uh, about what was going on with Jesus, but without a, a clear stand. So it was very confusing his attitude. And that is the reason why this uh, young woman that was a servant of the high priest um, react this way. Um, she saw him, but she was not completely sure if he was a disciple of Jesus or not. So this is the, re the reason why she look upon him and say, um, are you uh, a disciple of Jesus of Nazareth? So this uh, confusing behavior of Peter uh, promote this uh, reaction of this um, servant 
And unfortunately, um, Peter was um, unprepared to answer with sincerity this question. So he was embarrassed, he was ashamed, under pressure, and especially the environment make um, a great uh, impact in his life. And we see how weak he was uh, toward external influences. And this happened only because he tried to give appearance that didn't correspond to his internal feelings. So he was internally devastating, devastated. He loved his master. So trying to hide these feelings and react as a, a regular person together in the crowd uh, called the attention of other people because he didn't have a normal and regular behavior. And, and that is something that we need to learn, that in the moment that we hide what we really believe and try to act as everyone else, um, not only personally we run in confusion, but we also promote other people to react in a very strange matter because of our own uh, attitude. Thank you very much, Raquel. What can we learn from this situation? We can learn a lot. As long as the church is well accepted by the society, as long as the church is um, well a subject of pride and good success, perhaps we are happy to be identified as its member, but if the church is persecuted, if the church uh, is in some defeat and some lacking funds perhaps or other attitudes or attributes, perhaps then we will be ashamed to be identified with the church and that's what happened here with uh, Peter. As long as Jesus was uh, the powerful master that was healing sick and, and chasing away demons, all Peter was so identified with Jesus and he was so happy and proud to be his disciples. But now uh, when Jesus was arrested and actually he did not uh, fight with uh, his adversaries, uh, Peter was confused and uh, and actually he tried to hide, he tried to mingle with uh, the majority, with the society and this is so hu such a human reaction based on fear and based on the desire to be accepted by people and not so much by God and, and since it's a lot to learn also here he went to hit himself or to warm himself into the fire it was a worldly fire, a fire of the Pharisees and he mingled with his servants and we know that if we are mingled, we mingle this way, we can be influenced also by uh, this worldly spirits and this worldly attitude. So that was the case of Peter. But let's continue and see what happened with him. Uh, <clears throat> when another young woman recognized him as a Jesus disciple, what did Peter answer the second time? We see that uh, the Lord provides him a lot of tests and one after the other questions come uh, to Peter. What was his answer and his attitude? It's a problem not to be consequent between what we believe and what how we behave. So the immediate reaction of, of Peter the first time was to deny this kind of assertion, but also to change place. So um, changing place didn't change his attitude and also the way how people meet him. And again, the same situation repeated again. So um, he was extremely interested in the um, court procedure of Jesus, uh, but he tried to behave as he is completely indifferent toward that. So this also produced a reaction uh, related with the people around him. And again, 
another maid saw him and say unto them that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it. But this time he went a step further. So he had an oath uh, to this um, statement. And, and we find something interesting. Um, the first time was only a question. Um, are you really a disciple of Jesus? Because with other words, you don't belong here. So uh, don't try to disgust yourself uh, this way. So Peter denied that. Now, the second time in another place, and also with other people, he repeated exactly the same um, way to, to, to behave. And then was not a question, was a very clear um, <clears throat> a statement that he was a disciple of Jesus. And in order to be accepted by these people, he not only denied it, but he pronounced an oath. Um, something that um, not only uh, rejected this affirmation, but also completely refused uh, to have any connection with Jesus and to be accepted and come closer to this crowd there. So we need to understand that in the moment that we try to have a double life, or uh, to play with two different aspects of our life, so a spiritual one and a worldly one, uh, external one and an internal one, uh, always a conflict will appear. And in all the circumstances, uh, a pressure from outside uh, can even change our internal values that can be good, as in the case of uh, Peter. Peter had a very deep love for Jesus. That was out of question. But he was not able to confront shame, pressure from outside, and the result was an open denial of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, Raquel. There is something we can learn here in this lesson, and this is the, the corporate guilt. And if uh, one of uh, the society sin, if one of the church sin or transgress the commandment, or sees accused into the, into the court, then actually all other uh, members of the church, they share the corporate guilt. Everybody can ask, are you also a member of that church? Oh, that's this criminal. He was announcing the news and he's so terrible and he did this and that and that. And in this case, Jesus, although he was absolutely innocent, he was treated as a criminal. He was declared as a criminal. And this is the moment of his judgment. And the judgment takes place not in any other place, but in the palace of the high priest. This is the religious authority of Israel. This is the official leadership, spiritual leadership in Israel, the people of God in that time. So Peter was very confused. He knew that the Pharisees did a lot of wrong and that the leaders did a lot of wrong. They didn't recognize the master. However, when the things come so far, how much was Peter prepared to face this terrible contrast of the fame of the... The, the glory that he could share with the master in the past, uh, accompany him when he was doing the miracles in the streets, and now to share the terrible shame. And uh, both glory and shame are a corporate, uh, 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 um, uh, are a corporate um, uh, matters, and that's how people react many times. Uh, now, let's see what happened furthermore, uh, because Peter obviously was not prepared, as Raquel just mentioned, to face such a test. 
Let's see in the question number five. When Peter was questioned for third time about his connection to Jesus, did he have the courage to confess his faith in the Master? What can we answer on that question, Raquel? Um, uh, we see that, that, that Peter see the pressure even more intensively uh, in this third occasion because now are people that witness that he was there in the garden when Jesus was arrested. And this was a servant of the high priest that was a relative of the man whose Peter uh, ear was cut off. So did not I see thee in the garden with him? Um, so Peter came in the front in the moment when, when uh, all the crowd uh, was um, attacking Jesus and to be arrested. And he reacted this way to cutting the ear of the servant of the high priest. So everybody focused in him and his presence was clear at this specific moment. So um, the reaction... Um, of Peter was extremely bad, was so evident that he was there and that he was a disciple, that he was not able to confront the situation. And in order to make sure that he was not with Jesus, he not only denied it, but he cursed and he swear. Um, so we see an escalation in the intensity of the statements of Peter. The first time he only denied it and tried to change place. The second time he added also um, another reconfirmation of the denial. And in this third occasion, he also accompany his statement with curse and I swore in order to um, to feel near to this um, very simple and evil crowd around um, the palace that were all of them part of the um, way how Jesus was treated so in the moment that we separate us from Jesus, um, we will separate us further and further, not only um, verbally, but also um, we will escalate in this way to n reject completely any connection with Jesus, even if internally, Peter was uh, the disciple of Jesus. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, um, it's interesting. We usually take um, any kind of test as a negative uh, experience. However, the testimony says here that uh, still another opportunity was given him. So every test can be uh, taken also as an opportunity. Uh, God is giving us opportunities to prove, to prove and to test and to uh, show the, the faithfulness we have to the Lord. And that was the case of Peter. Now, why did Peter uh, found himself in such a complicated situation? Are all other disciples except John actually left Jesus and they left Jesus because they were scared and uh, because they did not understood what is going on and uh, when Jesus was arrested they were so disappointed that they left and everybody ran for his life and who knows where they hide themselves. Uh, but Peter did not and why did he, he didn't because he had incredible uh, self-confidence uh, uh, more than everybody else. He believed that he himself is so strong that he can confront any situation. He followed Jesus, although from far, but he followed him. And this is where danger comes up. 
Uh, dear brothers and sisters, if we are self-confident, if we remember that this is not the first lesson we we are uh, talking about Peter, we talk about him and the Holy Supper uh, when Jesus asked him to pray and not to slip. Uh, so Jesus spent a lot of time and tried to give a lot many lessons to Peter so that he can be prepared for that time of test. But Peter did not because he had this self-confidence and the uh, high opinion about himself. And uh, that's why he found himself also in that incredible difficult situation where he was not prepared, he didn't have the power, and uh, he, was, he didn't expect it actually to be found in, in this situation. And uh, we see uh, what happened with him. Let's see now the question number six. What happened? And what was uh, heard as he was still speaking and denying the Master for third time? Actually, there are two events uh, that, w w that waked up his memory and waked up his conscience, mm -hmm. uh, which, which were these elements and what happened with Peter. In the same way that the environment influenced him in the wrong direction, God has already announced him that the cook will crow. And when this happened the third time, uh, he realized that the announcement of Jesus was a reality, unfortunately for him. So Jesus told him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three. So, beside this external uh, confirmation, what he have done, also, when he denied him the third time, the eyes of Jesus meet the eyes of Peter according to the desire of ages and they look at each other and this doppel um, announcement what he has done uh, broke the heart of Peter but it's extremely important the way how Jesus look at him Jesus separate for a moment um, his thought and, 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 and his uh, look um, from this terrible condition where he was and situation, so he looked at Peter. And even in, in his terrible pain, he looked full of mercy, love and forgiveness, and grace to Jesus, to Peter. So this look from Jesus uh, remind Peter of his terrible action. So Peter immediately went out and wept bitterly. So he began to go directly to the place where he was uh, hours before with Jesus at Gethsemane. So he went back to the same place where also this communication happened. Thank you very much. It is uh, very interesting, this situation is here in the testimony says. At the same time, Peter's eyes were drawn to his master. Mm -hmm. The gentle countenance uh, uh, he read dried pity and sorrow, but there was no anger there. So Jesus, in that difficult time when he was in the court, when they were falsely accusing him, when he had this evil people trying to get him and in, in something wrong he never did. Uh, <clears throat> he still have the time to think about his poor disciples. And not all think about him, but he was looking at him. He was searching him in the crowd and he found him with his eyes and he looked at him. And in this look was not condemnation. And that is so, so great. And that actually is what broke Peter's heart and we know what happened. He ran out and he, he cried bitterly because he understood how wrong he is. He remembered the prophecy of our Lord Jesus. 
he remember his weakness and and his statements that have been proven false and uh, how terrible disappointed he was uh, it's not the first time Peter was disappointed from himself and I think it's not the first time we will be disappointed by ourselves there's so many times we can fall itself the Bible says seven times you will fall and you will come it will stand up the righteous man the righteous man means everybody and seven, seven times means many times uh, uh, fullness of times we will fall but we have to stand up again and that was the case of Peter uh, <clears throat> let's see now what was the attitude of Jesus Christ and what can we learn by this experience in question number seven did Jesus shut the door of mercy and brotherly relationships against Peter after his shameful denial uh, what can we say about that and not only Peter deny his master actually all the disciples run away except John everybody else was absent in that dramatic and such a painful and important time when Jesus was challenged in the front of the court I think it's uh, very important to analyze in a personal way this uh, experience of Peter because this is not far for us and if we are honest with ourselves, um, we have denied Jesus every time that we don't confess him publicly, when we um, try to hide our faith, when we didn't uh, proclaim what we believe, when is some kind of confusion between what we uh, internally believe in how we behave so the way how environment um, impact us and influence our behavior show our level of uh, spiritual maturity and Jesus announced this to Peter but Peter um, unfortunately feel too secure and, and now, at these specific circumstances, um, Jesus was looking at him um, with the purpose to let him know that is still hope, that is still opportunity. So even if we are in the most deep um, darkness in our life or a spiritual experience always without exception when we look at Jesus he will open light in our hearts and mind the conscience of Peter react uh, because of the attitude that Jesus showed to him and, and that is extremely important to have um, also the same feeling toward people that may be disappointed us we need to offer um, a new opportunity and the possibility to a change so the way how to avoid what happened to Peter in our personal lives uh, was clarified in advance uh, from Jesus side he said, I am praying for you that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strength thy brethren. Jesus also um, expect from his disciples to watch and pray with them. And, and explain also to all these three, James, um, John, and Peter, that the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak and this is our daily problem that very often is a separation between what we know that is right and what we in reality do so we have here the key elements to avoid to repeat this standard behavior of Peter under pressure so the first one is to watch to pray and to look at Jesus all the time 
don't try to dissimulate your relationship with Jesus. We need to be open, we need to be transparent, we need to be consequent with this what we believe. This will not only help every one of us to stay firm, but also to avoid any um, insinuation of questioning because the people will have a clear picture who we are and what we believe. So to try to dissimulate is the most dangerous condition in Christian life or to be look, look warm as Peter was. So to have a clear a position, respectful position um, toward the truth uh, not only is um, a protection for ourselves but also a very clear message toward others. Thank you very much. If we consider the first testimony we found something very interesting, at least I think so. It says, Peter denied his Lord in the hour of trial, but Jesus did not forsake his poor disciple. Although Peter hated himself, the Lord loved him. And dear brothers and sisters, I know that uh, any time we are, um, uh, when we fall, when uh, we are disappointed by ourselves, we hate ourselves, but it says here that if we hate ourselves, Jesus still loves us. The so more we hate ourselves, more he loves us. So yeah. we should never be discouraged. And uh, even if we fall in temptation, if we fall, if we, if we, have, if we have denied our faith, uh, brothers and sisters, as long as we are under grace, we have time and possibility of repentance. And we have the possibility to come back to Jesus Christ. And this is the, the right time, this is the right moment to acknowledge that and to take this step. Uh, <clears throat> also, furthermore, in the second testimony, we see the reason why Peter was so weak, because he had a self-confidence. We need to renounce self. As long as we know that we are weak, then we can trust and we need the power of God. And uh, this is how, for example, this poor man in India, uh, we see here in the background, they're warming themselves in the fire because they don't have sufficient heat in themselves to, uh, to stand the cold weather. That's how we need to come closer to our Lord Jesus Christ because from Him come the the worm, the hit, the, the Spirit of God can uh, make us and able to, um, to resist the temptation and to have a victorious uh, life. Let's any time we fall in test and we feel that we are tested, think about that, that this is actually a new opportunity that God is giving us to demonstrate uh, the power of Christ in our life. Never be discouraged and never give up. May the Lord bless you. Enjoy this Sabbath school lesson. And with the help of the Lord, we can see each other during the next week. Amen. Amen.